What we're going to be going over here is available for sale securities and we're going to look at a gain on the sale of some of these securities and we're going to look at how it affects comprehensive income and a reclassification adjustment that's required. So what we're going to do here, either we're going to have Corporation A here and they're going to have some available for sale securities that they're holding here. And what you have to do with these available for sale securities, you have to determine any unrealized gains or losses, holding gains and losses that you have on these securities. So we're just going to look at one year here. We're going to start out with year the beginning of the year here 1 1 x 1 and then we're going to look at the end of the year 12 31 x 1 and this is what we have to deal with when we're recording these um, uh, available for sale securities we have to do an evaluation here at the end of the year here to determine any unrealized gains and losses so just looking here at the beginning of the year here we had a cost on those securities of 210,000 fair value is 240,000 so the fair value here is greater than our cost therefore we would have had an unrealized gain at that time of $30,000 on the securities. But during the year here, we sold off some of the securities and there were, their cost was $70,000 here. So, uh, and their fair value at that time was $80,000. So what we're going to, we're going to be removing the difference here, our cost $70,000 versus our fair value of $80,000. We're going to remove $10,000 of those, of that unrealized gain or loss here. So, and that is going to be actually realized. So that's the point we want to make here. Since we sold them off, they're going to, that those securities are going to be realized here in our income statement. So looking at the end of the year here, well, we have to make we have to make a fair value. Um, determine what the fair value is and all I'm doing is subtracting out uh, the stock that we sold here to determine the fair value and the cost so just looking at the stock what we sold here subtracting that here from our beginning cost at 210,000 we're coming up with a fair or a cost here at the end of the year 140,000 and our fair value here the difference is going to give us 160,000 but nonetheless you would Typically, you have to go out and you have to make an assessment of what your fair value is at the end of the year. But just for our, our example here, I'm just taking the difference between what we started with here at the beginning of the year, subtracting out the stock that we sold, and that gives us our fair value. And if we look at it in terms of uh, cost versus fair value here for any unrealized gain, in, uh, gain here, we would have had $20,000 because our fair value here, 160, is greater than our cost of 140. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at how we'd handle this here. And what we're going to be looking at here, we're going to be looking at um, both, a re we're going to be looking at a realized gain here and some unrealized gain. So what you have to do with these available for sale securities, you have to set up a count here, uh, a title at available for sale securities here. And what you, and that's at their cost. That's the portfolio, portfolio cost here. So what we start with is the cost here on 11X1. That was that $210,000 here. So we debit our available or increase our available for sale securities here at 210,000. And what has happened here, let's look at the stock that was sold here. So we sold off $70,000 worth of cost here. So we credit out our available sales securities here by $70,000 to reduce that account here. But what we have then, uh, to look at, at the, on that sale here, we actually received $100,000 for those stocks that we sold. So we debit our cash here for $100,000 and then the difference gives us it's going to be a gain on the sale because it only cost us 70000 those uh, securities here. We received 100000 so we're going to credit our gain on sale here of $30,000. So that goes to our income statement and that's what we call a realized gain because we realized that it went to our income statement and it, it, it'd be a gain here on the sale of those securities. Okay, so the other thing we have to do here, when you're dealing with these available for sale securities, you have to set up this valuation account here. The fair, it's going to be that fair value adjustment here. So what we would do here at the end of the year here, 1231X1. So what were we sitting with here with that we had an unrealized gain here of twenty thousand dollars so um, and we have a fair value of a hundred sixty thousand cost of a hundred forty thousand so let's see how this fair value adjustment works now remember the fair value adjustment that directly increases or decreases the available for sale uh, security account here it's a valuation account rather than uh, do I, all our activity going into the available for sale account here any decreases or increases or decreases we set up the fair value adjustment 
for these available for sale securities here. Again, it's on our balance sheet here. It works in conjunction with available for sale account. So we would have debited that here for $20,000. And that was going up here. That was the unrealized gain at that point. So uh, debit that here, a fair value adjustment, and then the account that works with that here goes to that unrealized holding gain or loss. That's an equity account here on the balance sheet and that we would have credited that here for $20,000. So if we go on up here, you can see that's that unrealized gain here of $20,000. So whatever we had, in this case, a fair value adjustment account here, debited that for $20,000, and then the credit goes to the unrealized holding gain or loss here, uh, uh, credit here for uh, $20,000, the balance. So remember, this this unrealized holding gain or loss, that's an equity account here on our balance sheet here, whereas our gain on our sale here, that was a realized gain. This is an unrealized gain here, this, uh, whole, this unrealized holding gain here, equity on the balance sheet, whereas the gain on the sale here, that stock, that was that realized gain. Okay, so looking at this fair value adjustment just to see how that works here. So our end of the year, what we had here in our available for sale account here, the end of the year balance was 140000 here. Plus, you set this fair value adjustment up here. You increase that here by 20000 So that was the unrealized gain here, 20000 So what we end up adding those together here, the adjustment to the available for sale account, we come up with $160,000. So that's the fair value here. So we've adjusted our um, available for sale securities to their fair value here at the end of the year. So the point that we want to make here now, we've got to deal with this. We're going to we're going to be looking at the statement of comprehensive income here. And this is what we have to deal with. We have to deal with this unrealized holding gain that we have here of $20,000 on these on our available for sale securities here and also the realized gain here of 30,000. So what when you're dealing with these available for sale securities here uh, the total gains that would be included or total gain uh, total holding gains include both the realized gain in this case here and the unrealized gain. The realized gain here was 30,000, the unrealized here was 20,000. So we have a total of a $50,000 worth of gain here that we have to deal with. Okay, so now let's go down and look at our statement of comprehensive income and that's at the end of the year here. And what we're going to have to do here, we're going to have to make some adjustments to this uh, statement here. So we start out with our net income here for the year and let's just say it was $500,000. Now, what you have to note here, this $30,000 gain that we realized up here, that would have been included in our net income since it was it went to our income statement. So the $500,000 here includes that $30,000 gain. So if we didn't include the gain, then it would have only been $470,000 here, but it, it was included. Now, you also, for the our statement here we have what we have to break out this other comprehensive income here now the other comprehensive income that's the total holding gains during the year here that was the total holding gains that we have of fifty thousand dollars here thirty thousand realized and twenty thousand unrealized so holding gains here at fifty thousand now this is where this reclassification adjustment comes in here and what we have to do since we have this gain uh, we have to eliminate this gain here and I'll show you why here so if we didn't the the other comprehensive income here the total 50,000 would have been added to our total net income here at 500,000 to determine total comprehensive income here of 500 it would have been 500,000 plus the 50,000 would be 550,000 but the point is here we included this gain here, this realized gain of 30000 here in our net income here for the year here, but we can't include it twice here because the holding gains during the year would have included that 30000 income or 30000 that realized income here on the sale of those stocks here. So what we have to do is we have to subtract it out here. We have to subtract it from our total holding gains here, uh, subtract that out so our total holding gains here, other comprehensive 
income would have been 20,000 here for the year after subtracting out that gain. And the reason we have to subtract it out here is we can't. We have to a reclassification adjustment here. We have to eliminate this gain that would have been included in our net income here. So you eliminate it to eliminate any double counting it again. You can't count it twice here. By subtracting it out here, we net them out here. We add that 30,000 gain up here by subtracting it out 30,000 here. So everything uh, is sitting balancing out here. So our total comprehensive income here would uh, netting out our uh, subtracting out that gain here 30,000 we got 20,000 here other comprehensive income adding that to our net income here 500,000 so comprehensive income here is 520,000 and then the rule is here you, when you with these reclassification adjustment that's if you're selling any of those stocks that you have you're holding and available for sale securities here if you're selling any of them then um, or selling on any gain or loss that would have been going into net income here and when you're dealing with this other comprehensive income here that includes uh, both the realized and unrealized gains and losses for the year here so and the rule is here if you have a gain that you recognized on the sale of those stocks here you'd have to subtract it here from your uh, total uh, other comprehensive income here and if you had a loss well the opposite would be true here you would have to subtract it from your other comprehensive income to arrive at the total amount that you'd be adding to your comprehensive income so that's just the point we want to make here the uh, reclassification adjustment here it has to be made here based on any gains or losses to eliminate any double counting of gains here so you can't include it twice here you can't include it in your net income here and you and you can't include it in your other comprehensive income at the same time so it has to come out of the other comprehensive income in order that you come up with your proper uh, amount here in your comprehensive income and okay any gains here you'd have to subtract out any losses you'd have to add back to this other comprehensive income okay so just remember here when you're dealing with your statement of comprehensive income here you have your net income here and then you have to add in any other comprehensive income you have to make your reclassification adjustment on any gains or losses on stock that you sold that would have been included here in your net income any of those realized gains or losses that would have been included in your net income have to be subtracted added or subtracted here they have to readjust them to what they call this reclassification adjustment here to arrive at the proper uh, other comprehensive income that you're adding to your net income to determine the total comprehensive income so that's what you have to do here and when you're dealing with it you either have to make some statement in your financial statements or so some calculations here to deal with that uh, your those uh, uh, that reclassification adjustments for any holding gains or losses uh, for the year when you're dealing with your available for sale uh, securities okay so that'll end our subject